What's up, everybody? Welcome to the latest episode of Games Up Podcast. My name is Cameron McCullough Keeble, and I am joined, as ever, by the one and only him. Me, Lawrence. Him. Hi, you remembered your, your, your name? Uh, I, I did, yes. Good. You don't know what Lawrence it, it is, so it could be like de Medici <laughs> or uh, Lawrence, Lawrence. Lawrence titles right there. Yes, Lawrence, Lawrence titles. La- Lawrence all the titles. titles. All the titles. Uh, How are you doing? Of India. I'm all right. What was that? What? 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 <laughs> uh, good. Lewis isn't here because he's ill. Uh, so if you come across Lewis, wish him to get well soon because we want him to get well soon and all that. Yes, we, 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 we're running dry here. We're running on vapour. <laughs> I'll, I'll take your word for it. Uh, shall we get into the news? Let's. Good. Uh, ready? Ready for this one? <laughs> this is back again. <laughs> Konami! Uh, Konami workers have apparently been forced to give up their personal holiday to ensure that Metal Gear Solid Five reached its PC release date in time. Marvellous! So, so none of them were capable of taking the special uh, rat sinking ship. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, not quite. It's still got some lifeboats and some people bellowing out water at the bottom. Right then, women uh, and children first. Well, women and business. I may well first. say this name wrong, and if I do, I'm terribly sorry. Kenichiro, Kenichiro Imazumi, I think, possibly Imazumi. I'm not sure. Uh, tweeted that. PC launch day earlier than original plan. Our programmers didn't take summer vacation to make it happen. Dot dot dot. Kind of sad. Ah, oh, kind of sad. He then went. Yeah, yeah. Not at all a violation of their contract. Just kind of sad. Uh, he then went on to clarify that the team were willing to put in the extra work to get the PC release date looking better, but their families are not happy. I fucking bet they're not. Well, yeah. Normally, I mean. Do you do you have a I don't know in Japan if you have a statutory requirement to holiday? Um, that's a good question. I don't know. Um, we'll have to look it up. Certainly, I get the feeling with Konami that if you do, it's probably fairly minimal and yeah, it's it's probably not dick something move. that you're looking forward to. Yeah, but this is a another dick is, move on the dick on top of another dick move. This in terms a... of the notches on the bedpost, it's beginning to be like filed down to a toothpick at this point. It's a it's a fractal dick move. It's a fr- yes. There's That's a dicks a coming nice off other dicks, off other dicks, and yes. this is this is the it's dicks the all the way down. Yes, the tip of the tip, if you will. <laughs> uh, oh, God damn it, Konami! Fucking sort your shit out, because this is not the only news item on this list. Ah, <laughs> oh, fucking hell! Number two. Uh, I think you'll like this one. The award for the least necessary remaster ever has been claimed. Huzzah! By Deadpool the game. <laughs> you remember that? No. No. Uh, no, I think I'd managed to purge that one from my memory. But... Deadpool the game was a uh, game made by High Moon Studios for 360 and PS3. Uh, it was third person, kind of beat em up, kind of hack and slash. It was actually, like, I thought it was pretty good. I'd have played it again. I was I was pretty happy with it. Did, did I, it have Spider Man threes? No. Yeah, Spider Man threes irritating. Or was it Spider Man two? I can't remember. The irritating. I've got like five snarky lines. Oh I can, yeah, 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 I yeah, yeah. I did that for all every single... the time. But like, because Nolan North did a good job of voice acting it, it kind of was okay. It was it was an okay game. Like it wasn't bad, but it. But of course it, it doesn't need North. a remaster. Um, the inverted quotes remaster uh, will cost you a full fifty dollars at launch, whether you own ah, the game before or not. Uh, but it will pack all of the DLC, uh, and that's all two levels and two skins of it. Pedigree chum, that's a raw deal. That is a really raw deal. I mean, I don't think anybody bought the game when it came out for fifty dollars, um, like on last gen. <laughs> I don't want to say don't buy this, because if you want this, good for you. I hope you enjoy it and, you know, keep playing the games you love. Um, if you want this, but you're not sure whether to buy it, probably wait for a sale. Examine your motives. This is this is the kind of thing where you might want to send a message that, yeah, you, it's not really right to get away with this kind of shit. Um, and it's not like, it's not too bad. It's not end of the world Kyle bit kind of business practices, but it is the kind of thing that maybe we want to curtail a little bit. Or maybe they were just kind of scouring around the barrel for the last game to remaster before <laughs> finally moving on. Oh no, this game. is not this is not bottom of the barrel. <laughs> this still... is mid barrel. They're gonna go to the bottom of the barrel and then they're gonna dig through the bottom of the like barrel. Never and dead gonna... and dead or alive or 
I can't even. I can't think what would be like. Maybe the they've, of the after battle. they've made the last battlefront, they'll make another battlefront, the original battlefront remastered. I'd actually pay. I'd pay good money for a battlefront rem. I shouldn't really be saying that when I'm yeah, saying don't, don't buy don't a remaster. Say that. Sorry. Yeah. Probably wait for a sale for this one if you're interested in it. Um, I imagine it won't be long till that's the case. <laughs> Uh, number three, <clears throat> Amazon has started selling Nintendo digital content, uh, meaning it's another good sign that Nintendo are taking a nice step into the, the way future. of the present. Well, not the digital future necessarily, but the, the selling techniques of the present, which is nice because it's the it's the first sort of big progressive move since the passing of Iwata. And obviously, like it's it's them saying, "Hey, look, we sell digital stuff now," and it's it's just nice to see that roadmap continuing, and hope it continues long into the future. Indeed. Number four. That's it. Speaking of Battlefront, the uh, Star Wars Battlefront is getting a beta, uh, which is very nice because I don't know about you, but I'm not too jazzed about it yet. You're not too jazzed. Nope. Uh, I uh, by not too jazzed. Do you mean that they've they've shown you the things and you're not jazzed about it, or they haven't shown you enough things and that's why you're not? They've jazzed? shown the things. I like what we've seen, mm -hmm. but it's not what I wanted from Star Wars Battlefront, and I think that was a fairly, I think that's a fair response to say that 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 was kind of how the community felt when they announced it and brought it out. So I think giving people a chance to play it and say this is what we've made instead is a nicer way rather like it's nicer to say that rather than just say here's another trailer trust us when you pick it up like it's nice for them to say okay we you know we get it here play it for a week or four days or whatever and say make your decision based off that it's it's nicer than nothing yeah um and we're lucky that we're gonna play it well you're not because you're gonna be down at uni <laughs> um <laughs> doing my doing my real life things almost yeah hmm. um Certainly I am, and I'm sure Lewis will as well play it at EGX. Mm -hmm. uh, and we'll report back to you on that and what it feels like and all that jazz. But I think but this is it's nice that this is a way of getting all the public's hands on it before it re releases. Uh, certainly, yeah. Certainly, I, I'm... Also, sorry to yeah. cut you off, um, hopefully a nice way of testing that it doesn't launch broken. Mm -hmm. Ho yeah, um, and we'll get on to that in a bit, but hopefully this is a good stress test for it, because... Um, I think it's going to need it. You, you think so? You think cracks are starting to show along the seam? I think knowing the release that Battlefield 4 had, where that game was broken with a capital fucked um, and not fixed for a fairly long time, knowing that it's dice making it again, it's coming out from EA, it's a heavily anticipated game and it's running... I mean, you've seen the visuals of it. Yeah. It's running pretty impressive technology. I... I worry about something like that that's online only. Because if it's broken at all, that's a big nail in that coffin. Well, the question is whether they'll be able to address it quickly. That's true as well. But this this is something we'll get on to in a little bit. Uh, number five, new Sus This is really... Quick spoiler warning for this. This is kind of really heavy dodgy news. So uh, here we go. Here's one for the auditors. News has come... Oh, yeah. News has come to light uh, of Machinima signing a secret deal with uh, Xbox to promote the Microsoft console uh, in videos Mich without making it clear and Mich so on and so forth. Let me, before we say any more on this, let me go to the official article on this, uh, written by Chloe Rad of IGN. Machinima, a multi-channel uh, gaming network based in California, has decided to settle Federal Trade Commission charges over allegations that it deceived consumers by releasing paid video advertisements as the Xbox One disguised as personal opinion. Now, it's already uh, been in shit about this, hasn't it? Yeah. It is. Um, according to the FTC, I'm not sure what that is. I imagine it's the Federal... That's the Federal Trade Commission. Oh, yeah, the thing we mentioned a minute ago. Uh, according to the Federal Trade Commission, Machinima paid two YouTubers in its network $15,000... Uh, and thirty thousand dollars to create videos expressing endorsement of the Microsoft Xbox One console. Okay. Uh, these content creators were instructed by Machinima to create content that showcases Microsoft products in positive light, but were not required to dis required to disclose the compensation they received for doing so. Okay. So is this Machinima's problem, or is this the YouTuber's problem? I think this is both. I think it's also, honestly, an Xbox problem. 
I would definitely say the the that Microsoft in this case is the is the big bad puppeteer, and these guys are. I mean, I know I'm I'm the first one to jump at the gun at saying that Microsoft is <laughs> the big bad uh, wolf, uh, but I think there's no small amount of grandma eating going on here. <laughs> I would say Machinima is the big bad wolf, because. To play devil's advocate, it's Microsoft's job to sell its console. Microsoft advocate, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes. <clears throat> it's Microsoft's job to sell its console. Now, mm. it has to do that within moral means, but, like, it doesn't... <laughs> Microsoft don't have the same responsibilities to the YouTuber's audience as the YouTubers do, whereas Machinima do, and those YouTubers do. Um, and... The question is, is did Microsoft institute the you must not show that this is a paid advertisement? Ooh, or was that's it a good Machinima that, that implemented it? Let me try and see that. I find mean, that out. I mean, the, the YouTubers and Machinima would still be responsible if they're the ones that said, yeah, uh, we'll agree to these terms. Uh, definitely they're not getting out off with any amount of shit poured on their names. Um... I mean, let's sort of deal with this head on. This is shit. This is really shitty. Corruption. And at a time when the games industry has been fucking, and to be honest, we have been dragged through shit over this. Like, and whether, you know, whether you believe that Gamergate was on the subject of this or whatever it was, it's how it got popular and it dragged the gaming industry, whether for better or for worse, for, through shit for this. Don't fucking do this stuff. Like, full disclosure is nicer for everyone, it's better for you, it's better for us. I, it doesn't profit anyone to lie like this. It doesn't profit... It if, fucking if didn't are... profit the Xbox One because, I'm sorry, no, no fucker bought Rise <laughs> that year, which they were promoting... It took Phil Spencer coming along and changing this sort of shit for the Xbox One to gain the ground it did. And it didn't help the journalists and the gaming industry because look at what fucking happened. Stop doing it. If if you are a journalist, you rely on your journalistic integrity to sell your opinions. Mm, and at absolutely, the end of the day, absolutely. If, they are sta- if they are stained... Uh, be it a journalist in any sense, be it a a YouTube channel or any kind of reviewer, um, all you're doing is kneecapping yourself. (laughs) There's there's no simple, there's no uh, complicated way to put it. All all you're doing is impairing your own ability to uh, get those YouTube views. Okay, this is interesting. This is really interesting. Let's let's um, go down the rabbit hole. I'm going to quote another article now uh, by John Fingus of Engadget. Mm-hmm. Thank you very much uh, for writing it and hope you don't mind us uh, reading from it. Uh, Machinima has agreed to settle uh, the Federal Trade Commission charges that it misled gamers by failing to disclose the Xbox One reviews from YouTube influencers, so popular channels, uh, were really paid promos. Under the terms of the deal, Machinima has to make sure that any promos are clearly disclosed, refuse to pay for those that aren't, and check in on campaigns to make sure the disclosures haven't vanished. And in case in case you're wondering, while the FTC has determined that Microsoft and its ad agency were partly responsible, it believes these promos were isolated influence that don't reflect those two companies' policies. In That's which case, really interesting. This sounds like it's actually Machinima. In which case, uh, Microsoft's name is... Um, clean as, clean as a sheet. Well, not entirely clean. They were they were partly responsible. Clean as a sheet so... with some spots on it, but yeah, we're not talking yeah. like a like a full like. Clean. Skid mark it's like sheet. it's it's clean as a, one of those towels that you ma- that you accidentally like drop in the bath as you're getting out. Yeah, it's got like a damp corner, but it's fairly good. Wow, that's really interesting. I di- I didn't even read into that. So, wow. Um, I, I'm glad you went and looked that up because I, I am as well. <laughs> right, willing to to get all pissy at those Microsoft people. Sorry, Microsoft. Uh, I'll take it back. People did in fact buy Rise. Um, and <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, yeah, there was uh, Clive and uh, and um... Phil Spencer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Him. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So it wasn't it wasn't an Xbox thing. Apparently, it was uh, Machinima, which is <laughs> probably. 
that actually feels kind of more shitty because Microsoft, you can't even say, well, Microsoft are trying to sell a console because they were, but they were trying to do it honestly. Well, it depends. I mean, well, I, I mean, not like what I'm saying here is there may be a certain amount of wink and nudge that was going on at the uh, a contrary task between the verbal decisions and the written one. Whilst that's true, the only information we have to go on is what the FTC's decided, and from uh, what the FTC's decided, it does seem like the ball is fairly in Machinima's court. So, all right then. Um, two conclusions can be drawn from this. One, uh, <laughs> we doubt Microsoft potentially more than we need to. Yes. <laughs> Two. Yeah, probably there. If this show ever gets big, we'll never be on Machinima. <laughs> <laughs> Number six. I think I can live with that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I I get the feeling they could live with that as well. Hmm. Uh, Number six. A Mega Man movie is in the works at 20th Century Fox. Huzzah! I think. Okay. Do you like Mega Man? I'm, I love Mega Man. Mega Man's great. I, I I don't know that I've ever needed to see a movie of it. I mean, oh. it, it would be nice if Capcom made a, a nice Mega Man game, really. I'm sure somebody has been asking for it. Maybe, well, maybe Clive oh, yeah, or I'm Phil sh- Spencer. Yeah. He doesn't get much time to play play games, so he just watches movies on the way to various board meetings. Mm. Um, I don't know. It's kind of weird that Capcom are, license, are giving them the license to make a Mega Man movie, but not really doing right by the games. I mean, they've made the collection, which comes out this month, and apparently it's really good, but like they haven't made a good Mega Man game for a few years, and it's... Maybe they're willing to retire the property. Heaven forfend! Maybe. And in which case, they're now letting... It's like throwing it out in the garden for the pigeons to go out. <laughs> the vultures are slowly clawing at the skin. <laughs> um, Yeah, so more, more video game movies. Mm. Here we go. Interesting. Are you going to go see that one? I don't know that I'm going to go and see any of them, honestly. <laughs> I mean, the Borderlands movie is fascinating, and I I probably will go see that. But this this stinks to me of superhero movies. In Let's the, make a video there's game There's fucking movie. way too many of them. They're taking over everything, and I don't know that that's a good thing. So I'll, we'll see how they're handled mm-hmm. before I say whether I'll go see them or not. Interestingly, mm-hmm. uh... oh, okay, he's not. Avi, uh, as far as I can tell, Avi Arad is not linked to this, but he is linked to Metal Gear Solid, the movie, mm-hmm. and Borderlands, the movie, and I think a couple of others. So he seems to <laughs> have his uh, have his production fingers on many video game pies. <laughs> Maybe it's part of a concerted effort to put all these old IPs out of pasture. To make one big video game universe. Yes. Uh, and number seven. And this will lead on to our topic of the week. Here we go again. Uh, fuck Konami. Metal Gear Solid Five has launched. It's got incredible reviews across the board. But it has free-to-play content, as we made clear last week. Mm-hmm. And now uh, it's launched and its online services were barely functional. <laughs> Now, to be fair, this has had not as much effect as it could because this is just the single player. The multiplayer doesn't launch for another few weeks. Um, You want to make some predictions? Well, that's what I was thinking. Bearing that in mind, is this a really bad sign? (laughs) Because it Uh, seems like a pretty bad sign. I I would say that 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 would be. Given Konami has thus far proved its general abilities... (laughs) So far, I don't think it's unreasonable to say that when the multiplayer comes out, the servers are going to be shit as fuck. Might be, might be reason to worry there. Yeah. So our topic of the week this week leads on from that, and it is games are kind of broken <laughs> right now. Um, this week we had the first patch for Arkham Knight, mm-hmm. and apparently, like the game is running much better. It's working much better. But it kind of fucked up all the textures in the game, so people are like having incredible lighting effects, but like buildings are fucking missing. Um, so, so like we've had that released, and Metal Gear Solid has released now with online problems. Um, games are kind of being released broken, really more than they should be. Um, in fairness, mm-hmm. it's been happening a while now. Yeah, I- I'm. Uh, I mean, where would you say was the dawn? Where can we say that releasing games in a shitty, unfinished state and then hastily patching them together on patches uh, really, really began? I mean, 
I I call Skyrim as a kind of I wouldn't say it's Skyrim the dawn is a of good the age. example. Um but it was definitely like It was like the precursor. We should have looked at that and worried. Yes, that that was the prototype of the, <laughs> the the warning of things to come. Yeah, that's a fair shout. Um obviously Skyrim had its problems on PlayStation where I my favorite uh bug mm-hmm. was occasionally mammoth would be spawned like uh <laughs> About 50 feet off the air. And they took full damage. And you wouldn't know oh that my they God, were there. Awesome. So it was like being... You'd be rained on, on... <laughs> mammoths. It's terrifying. I mean, Skyrim had its problems on PS3 where... Like, the more you played the game, the bigger your save file got. And the bigger your save file got, the less frames per second you'd see. To the yeah. point where, like, the it, was, hour mark it was basically like a PowerPoint presentation by the end of it. Yeah. Um, and that was fixed, but it wasn't really fixed enough to fix that game for the PlayStation community, and they didn't really get a lot of reparation for that. But yeah, we probably should have looked at that and worried. I think, really, the, the point at which the industry has started kind of taking the piss with it is Assassin's Creed Unity Drive Club Halo, which all happened within two or three months of each other, or if, if not one or two months of each other. And we had three tentpole AAA releases for each of the consoles, two exclusives and one for both, that were just a myriad of fuck upperies. I mean, like... You want to take a moment to explore maybe why. So, well, it, okay, so it's different for each one. Um, Assassin's I Creed... I would say there are some overarching... Oh, there's some unities. definite overlaps. Oh, very good, sir. Uh, I'm here all Thursday. <laughs> um... There. So, w- w- which one do you want me to start with? I'd stay. Start with Unity. Okay. So, Assassin's Creed Unity launched, and um, it was buggy as all hell. It, there's a uh, pop in of this, pop in of that. NPCs not behaving. Crowds floating being eyeballs. fucked up. Floating eyeballs. Heads missing. The game's frame rates were chugging along. The uh, on um, not like online stuff, but certain capacities of the game didn't function as they should. There were game breaking glitches, this, that, the other. Mm-hmm. It just didn't work as advertised. Um, and in order to fix it, uh, Ubisoft and believe me, it's still not fixed. Yeah, like it's fixed to a point where you can play it. I've played through all of Unity. I really like Unity as a game. I think what, it's as re- in the story and as in the Assassin's Creediness of it. Okay. I like it feels like an Assassin's Creed game, but it's hella broken. <laughs> right. Like there are still crowds being fucked up, NPCs popping out of everywhere, people spawning in the air doing this. My favorite one, and I've explained this to you mm-hmm. a couple of times, but my favorite one, uh, you watched it, and I've got it on. Um, I'll I'll link the video. I recorded it on my Xbox when it happened to me. But there's a great scene where. You're talking to one of the characters. I won't say any spoilers in case anybody's interested. Um, but you're t- and obviously you can find the video below. You're talking to one of the characters, and they're saying there's it's a deep moment where they're talking about conflict and how you would deal with it, and it's it's tense and it's a beautiful character moment. And then in the background, two NPCs spawned, but they spawned talking as though they were on the streets of the game usually. So just off in the distance, you've got. Sacre bleu! Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> like noises going on all the way through. And so it sounds like these two random fuckers walked into this discussion with this important historical character and were like, oh my god, it's him! Oh, Jesus! What? It's fantastic. Um, <laughs> but yeah, the game launched and it was, it, was, it was broken, it didn't work, it was as many synonyms as you can for not being functional. And to fix it, uh, Ubisoft took out, sent out a patch which further downgraded the visuals. Um, not a huge amount. It still looks really good, but like it didn't do enough to properly fix the game, but it also didn't do it. Also like the game had to take a hit for it. Mm-hmm. That was like a big flagpole in the the way of it. Mm-hmm. Then Master Chief Collection launched and that was Christ. That was awful. It, um, was, it was truly appalling, wasn't it? It was yeah. New, um... It was awful. The matchmaking. So the servers, the matchmaking, the this, that, the other, just was barely existent. Mm-hmm. Um, the you know the, the 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 so the Master Chief Collection is a collection of all of the four games, uh, all of the four number games, and all of their multiplayers. Mm-hmm. So the idea was that like you could play. All of the games, all the multiplayers, you could have playlists that cross between them for the best maps. You could have like, you could have ranks in different 
in different types, in different playlists, in different games. You could so like you could play Halo One and Halo Four ten minutes apart from each other, and it would all be collected. And it's like Dreamland thing for anybody who likes Halo, but mm. it was kind of over ambitious in a way because like I mean, there's better reason for Halo than Unity. Like Unity was a full game running on an engine, it just over ambitious graphically a little and they hadn't really done enough work on it. They they that well they released it too quickly. Exactly. Whereas Halo you can at least point at it and say, Well, okay, but that's like three generations of online code running on one console on one infrastructure. Yeah, they that's... really jerry rigged it, hadn't they? I don't know that they jerry rigged it. I just don't know that they'd put enough cement in when they released it for people to shake the foundations if that makes sense. I, I must not adequately stress. Well, whatever. I I am in insufficiently knowledgeable when it comes to the architecture of the Xbone <laughs> yeah. or indeed the architecture of any console or or full disclosure ar- or architecture in anything. I haven't I done coding for 3 years. <laughs> You've done coding? I've done coding. What have you coded? Um, only in Fortran, though. Yeah, right. It's what real engine. It's what real engineers code in, and everyone else is a key cheater, apparently. But whatever. Key cheaters are nice. Anyway, yeah, the game launched and it was really, really broken. Uh, the matchmaking didn't work in the slightest. It certainly didn't work as advertised. People had issues with a single player as well, and the game is basically fixed now. But it took a patch in February ish to fix it. What, what Skyrim? Like, I mean, how long did Skyrim take to be? Skyrim fixed? took a fairly long time, if I remember rightly. It was on the months, if not. Would you say? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I would say it was incrementally fixed. I mean, by the time you, yeah, it you, wasn't. By the time you got to sixty hours, they had after a couple about a week or so, they got a patch that dealt with the sixty hours. But then other issues would crop up later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They dealt with it them. wasn't. It wasn't like they didn't click their fingers and fix it all at once. So yeah, incrementally fixed is is a fair way to say it. But like, I think the point at which you can play it and say this is a fixed game was a good set of months afterwards. Yeah. Um, and then Drive Club had the same problems where they would launch, uh, the game struggled to function, the online stuff didn't function in the slightest um, in the way it was advertised, and the PlayStation Plus edition uh, of Drive Club, which was promised at like the... Um, what do they call it? The the reveal of the PlayStation 4 yep. was delayed severely. Um, in fact, it launched in June this year when the game came out what in was that? the um, holiday season last year. So nearly three quarters of a year. What was that? What was it called? Uh, it was a SimCity. I can't remember whether it was three or four. Oh, Sim... The one that was designed to only be jerry-rigged. And I'll use that word twice now. Yeah. Uh, to only be playable online. Yeah. And the most galling, disgusting thing about it was all, all the actual game itself were operated fine. It's just be- because they had sold it as only online and they hadn't sorted out the servers so that they could play it online. Nobody could play it on release. Yeah, SimCity was a SimCity was a big fuck up. That um, was disgusting because it's like. Um, uh, how would I say? Uh, <laughs> tying an allergic person to a particular buffet table. So someone allergic to, say, prawns, and they're making every single dish with prawns. <laughs> That's a pretty vivid vivid mind picture right there. Um, yeah, SimCity was another example. The game launched, the online functionality was broken, the this, that, the other was broken, and it broke the game and fairly made it unplayable. And then there's so many more that we can add to this list now. Unfortunately, Battlefield 4 released and didn't work, didn't function properly. People were up in arms about it, but not enough was done. On its own, Mm -hmm. it's absolutely shit. Yeah. Put in the larger context of people selling pre-orders. Yeah, exactly. Put selling pre-orders, the idea of the pre-order, the one thin skin of justification being that when you buy it, you can play it right away. That's what's special. You don't have to wait. You don't have to... That You're guaranteed to be able to get a copy. Now, if you can't play that, if then there's no point in having a pre-order. Let me just cut in here for one second to, uh, to discuss pre-orders. Don't augment your pre-order. Whatever you do, don't click on that. Don't pre-order uh, Deus Ex Mankind Divided. Don't. We talked about it last week. You can find the show there. Just don't do it. Carry we do on. a lot of swearing then. 
Yeah. <sighs> and if you can't play your game as soon as you've as soon as you've bought it with the pre uh, which is supposed to be the one redeeming feature of a pre order, mm-hmm. then there's no point in pre ordering. Yeah, exactly. So exactly. don't pre order and. Games, if you are pushing, uh, developers, if you are pushing pre-orders, actually make sure the game works. Can, can we say here, developers, but it's fair to say publishers more than developers, I think. Oh, well, there's an entire pushing, conversation. That, that is, but I think it's fair to say that pushing the job of sales and certainly pushing the job of release dates is a publisher's mandate more than a developer's one. Well, so. That's a fight that emerges out of the mess of the publisher and the... That's true, um, and that's one of the pro- one of the reasons this shit happens. Ubisoft, you have no excuse. You publish your own games. Yeah. Um, yeah. So my question, I have two questions to you, mm-hmm. um, and the first thing is, is this a burden we have to bear now? Like, does this is there gonna be a year of this generation or the next generation or how, whenever when we don't have a major tentpole fuck up? And secondly, considering the sheer size of releases we have this year. Fallout 4, Tomb Raider, Halo, Just Cause, Rock Band, uh, the Uncharted Collection, which is another collection with mul- uh, I don't actually know if it has the multiplayer, but it's another collection. Like, um, I would say as people explore the capabilities of the next gen more and more. Let me finish that second question. No, no you're not allowed uh, to. Carry on. Uh, Star Wars Battlefront, Call of Duty... Is it Blops 3? Call- Cobb Blops 3. Is there any game that you point at and go, ooh, I am, I'm worried about that? So, in your own time. So, from what were the options again? So, oh, no, no, no. I just have to do any, this in reverse off. Just order. sort of any game, but I can give you, like, major temples. So you've got Just Cause 3, Fallout 4, Halo 5, Tomb Raider. Uh, Tomb Raider has no multiplayer, which is something to bear in mind, but even so. Uh, you've got the Uncharted Collection. You've got Star Wars Battlefront. You've got Cobblops 3. Uh, you have Rock Band 4. Did I mention Rock Band 4? Rock Band I would 4. say Hitman is definitely one. Oh, that's that a I good shout. Because if you all, if if any of you listened back to when we when we saw its appearance in um, Square Enix's conference at E3, Square Enix's E3, um, we and all I looked think at PlayStation it as well and said, uh, "This is this is too bare bones. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. they're, they're actually showing us too little." And it looks like they're pushing out their game Ooh, too that's quickly. A really good show. Now, every time that we've had a game being pushed out really quickly so far, it's always turned out to be a shit mm-hmm. show, mm-hmm. just like Unity. So I'm gonna put. I would put my money on Hitman. Fuck, that's a really good call. <laughs> I'm I'm tempted to say Battlefront because I think Sod's Law. There's a great deal riding on it, especially with um, the Force Un- uh, the Force Unleashed coming out. The Force release. Is it the Force Unleashed? It's not the Force Unleashed. Is it the Force Awakens? The Force Awakens. The Force Unleash was the game. Was the um, game. Um, yeah, with that coming out, there's kind of a lot riding on Battlefront, and it just feels like that's the kind of like that's the kind of thing where gamers are gonna get shat on again. <laughs> so I worry about that. But yeah, um, Hit Hitman is a good show. Hitman's a, and the thing is that game is episodic, and they've said that it will fully release in 2016. So they may even be worried about it themselves. Because that's the kind of thing that you say when you're like twitchy. Yeah, I've no doubt. Oh, I've not. Any that's, of... that's good. Who who releases? Uh, who's um in charge of the developing and the publishing of it? Nah. So uh, it's being developed by IO Interactive and I believe published by Square Enix. Let me just check that up. Right. If that's a twofold dance and there will be any amount of fighting in between to decide an appropriate release date. Yeah, that's true. That's How absolutely does Square true. Enix's history measure up for no, releasing? Ha- yeah, it games. is. It's developed by IO Interactive and published by Square Enix. It comes out in de- December, although it fully releases with a disc as well uh, in 2016 because it's an episodic. It's basically an early access hitman. So right. take that what you will. Uh, how would you say mm, release problem? Yeah, Hitman is a really good show. Um, so do you think we ever come to a point in this generation or the next or wherever when we, we don't deal with this shit? I'd be willing to say it's going to get worse before it gets better. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Certainly I think that games are allowed to do this more 
with the rise of digital always online a constant internet connection between your console means and your um and the uh the developer means that they can fix this stuff post mhm mm mhm mm uh, means that they can get away with the shit when they couldn't have previously. Uh, so Square Enix do have a, a, a bit of a history. They released uh, Final Fantasy fourteen, A Realm Reborn, uh, and had to uh, pull it from sales and re um, issue refunds because of uh, performance problems with the game and lack of... Um, what's the word? It's, uh, appropriate information as to what you need to, for it to perform and so on and so forth yep. but they don't i don't think they have anything halo style <laughs> um maybe got no ubisoft something that does worry me is halo 5 because i do worry that that could be another broken one i don't think it will because i don't think it's anywhere near as ambitious as halo the master chief collection mm -hmm. but They've already said that they won't have a certain, I think it's big team battle mode, which is all the vehicles and stuff, in it at launch. That's coming later. They've said that they're giving all the DLC away free as to not to split the um, community, which is cool. But I don't know, because if, if that game breaks, that could be that franchise done. <laughs> like, if you have two broken games in a row especially like halo 5 is the tentpole for xbox mm -hmm. you know tomb raider is a big get but everybody is still kind of raw with microsoft that they got tomb raider and took it away for exclusivity so halo 5 is the big one they're banking on and like if that's broken that i could i i'd be willing to say that we probably won't see halo after halo 6 and that would be a real, real shitter with Halo Wars 2 being announced. Because, like, if that game... If Halo 5 is broken, Halo Wars 2 is going to really suffer when it's a totally different game doing a really cool thing. Will it suffer? I'm, yeah, I yeah, don't, I'd I say don't know so. how, over, how much I think of an overlap there is between the people that play Halo Wars and the people that play Halo. I certainly think that if you have two years in a row where there are big news stories of Halo game broken, the people who, like... The people who are paying attention to like, oh, I like Halo. Hold on, it's being done, but it's being released by Creative Assembly, isn't it? Yes. Then it will be released broken. I guarantee it. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. All right, that's a <laughs> big way to come out there. Um, yeah, I kind of worry about Halo Five. I have relative faith in the Xbox, um, in the people behind it, because I'm sure Phil Spencer is a smart enough man to know. Yeah. No, we can't let that happen. Um, but it could be sod's law that something goes wrong and it does sort of... Maybe they, I mean, maybe they the... hand the port um, to... Uh, maybe they try and do a port and then they end up handing it off to a third company. A port to where? Who knows? To the, the PlayStation. <laughs> yeah, let's yeah. go with that since we're, we're indulging this whole port uh, Warner Brothers thing. I don't thing. know, maybe. I mean, it's not the weirdest thing. Gears of War is now coming to the PC because Phil Spencer's trying to unify... You know, those those bases, Gears of War 4 is basically coming to the PC, 4s or 6s. So yeah, maybe Halo 5 isn't the weirdest suggestion to come to PC. Um, and in that case, so, yeah, maybe... Certainly it would like make that. sense if Creative Assembly... But certainly the media, they're more happy working. <laughs> well, no, Halo 5 is not Creative Assembly. Halo Wars 2 is Creative I, Assembly. I, I'm, mi I'm mixing them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, my other question to you is this, and this is a genuine question, and I know we focus on Arkham um, a lot because we're all... Well, we all enjoy it. Um, my question to you is, Arkham Knight really has shot two things in the foot. It's shot Rocksteady in the foot because they didn't work on it, but they're pulling the shit for it. Mm -hmm. Which is fair enough because they're kind of responsible for it. Um, and it's really shot the Arkham series in the foot. You think? Yeah, I'd say so. I'd say there's a lot of um, shaken faith in that series. Okay. Do you think that a company can come back from something like that and, and gain the same strength they had. Like, do you think when we eventually see Arkham 5, whatever it is, which I bet you we will, um, do you think it still has the same power and hype behind it? Or do you think there is a level of cynicism that is now sort of leveled over that hype? Oh, I don't know. Of... I mean... 
what do you call it? Assassin's Creed. Mm-hmm. Did they... Well, I think it's still a bit too early to say whether they recovered from Unity. I, yeah, I would definitely that's say that the, that the Assassin's Creed series has been irredeemably tarred. Um, but I would say the tarring started long uh, a bit before Unity. Um, okay. With with Assassin's Creed Three, yeah, fair point, fair point. Okay, yeah, that's a fair response. So yeah. So I don't know. Okay. Plainly. Well, I guess I guess as with everything that we talk about, we'll have to wait and see. <laughs> um, that was a really good topic. That was that was a good chat. Yeah. Should we talk about an indie game? Let's talk about an indie From game. From one good mature chat uh, to another. Uh, this game is called. And here's where it gets interesting. I'm going to spell it out first because I think we're going to pronounce it probably wrong because it's I'm not entirely sure how. Uh, it's spelled C I B E L E. I think it's called Sabeel. I'm going to say Kibale. Kibale. Yes. Sibile. 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 Maybe it's like um Roman, you know, Roman C's that they're just a hard K. Kibale. Oh. Kibale. Kibale actually. That doesn't sound too off. So it's either Sibili or Kibele. Yes. We should probably know this. We should. Uh, yeah. Sibili. When you're Sibili releasing Kibele. games, totally release the phonetic, um, the, uh, the phonetic uh, way to say it. Yes. Uh, it is a game being created by... Uh, sorry, it's being created by Nina Freeman. I believe. Let me just double check that. Yeah, Nina Freeman. Uh, and... It's, um, Is she a game developer with any previous? She, I, I don't know. That's a very mm. good question. Look it up. It's a uh, yeah. You look it up. We've done the research. Uh, Nita Free and uh, Nina Freeman says this about the game. Uh, it's a game about love, sex, and the internet. Hmm. You know, it's a tick on all three for me. I don't know about yourself. Well, you know, since this is a mature game, I can't really. <laughs> I can't. I, I so, need to be mature about it. So basically, uh, the game is um, it's it's the story of somebody's experience of meeting somebody online and eventually sort of going through that relationship to to the eventual end, whatever that eventual end is. Um, we'll get to that in a second. But like, um, it's it's being hyped up by lots of websites and and discussed as like the most mature approach to gaming to to sex in gaming that we've had in in a long time which is nice because we kind of do well, normally when one reads mature one usually thinks of something like um was it splatterhouse grind grindhouse oh right yeah yeah, yeah. i, I can't remember mean. um blood on exposed breasts uh, yeah, you think of mature senseless. in like the eighteen plus kind of way. Mature in the immature sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you will, um, and this this purports to actually be mature, mature, and <laughs> what hu normal human beings do. Um, it seems like a fairly progressive game because the uh, the the game discusses the story of somebody who meets their um, partner who goes on to be a sexual partner online in a video game, um, and it it's. The most interesting thing about it, genuinely, and I know this is like a, a really cliche thing to say, but like, it seems fairly realistic and not like video games are great and I love them. And, you know, you can shoot a sheep into the air on a balloon in Metal Gear Solid 5 and that's fucking great. But <laughs> when it comes to like dealing with sex and mature stuff, we don't really do like dialogue and and intimacy and that kind of stuff well. There are certain places that do it really well, but <laughs> you know how, like, in The Simpsons when something awkward happens, instead of doing a better job of it, they just have Lisa Simpson pull a collar and go, Arr. that's kind of how video yeah. games deal with stuff fairly frequently. And it's really nice that there is now people, like, especially with the indie renaissance that's been happening over the, the major few years, like... It's really nice now that there are video games who are like, yeah, this isn't Gears of War 3, but this is really cool. <laughs> like, And it's it's actually interesting in dealing with stuff maturely. Um, From what I've seen of the game, mm -hmm. it appears to be a basically one of those Fulbright uh, walking story uh, games. Mm -hmm. Only the walking story uh, has, um, has arcade sections, or rather 
has sections where you uh, where you are playing a game within the game, and that game is where you meet your best beloved. I'm just gonna say quickly. Um... I love Fulbright and I love walking simulators. I don't know I whether I don't know how you mean that term. But when I, I say walking simulator, I don't necessarily mean it leveled with distaste, like okay, I do with good, every other word good, that I say. Good. Um, <laughs> I don't know. That's an entirely different conversation. Yeah, we'll 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 do that topic one day. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's a game within a game. You meet this person in a uh, in a um, an RPG that the the character of the game who is the the developer of them themselves, I believe. Oh. Um, yeah, I think so because they um, because between each section, you get videos from the creator who talks in depth about their relationships and intimacy and that kind of thing and like some fairly gutsy stuff. Apparently, it's quasi autobiographical. Was that's quite a term there? It is the game inside the game is called Valtamiri. Uh, and it's within that game that you meet I this person. I think that's one of the enemies on uh, Skyrim. The I'm, Valtimeri. Yeah, but I'm sure if you throw enough like vowel sounds together, something will be... Like the... Clack of Blackguns. I'm sure that's an enemy somewhere in the, in the Elder Scrums. In the Elder Scrums. The Elder Scrums. Elder Scrums. <laughs> the Elder Scrum. It's, uh, it's the, the ultimate anyway. rugby. Um, yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Um, it's... So the game within a game is like a grindy RPG that you you play through with the guidance of this character and the character that she meets, um, but it's but it's kind of clever because sexy Mc romance pants. So, yes, that's his name. Um, <laughs> it's kind of clever because like the story isn't about the RPG game. That's just the game you're playing to hear the story coming from. It's a clever way to do it. It is, and like it's more importantly, it's a game that's actually trying to approach. It's a also... real world subject with real world problems from a nice progressive standpoint where you don't have to shoot things in the face. But it's also how you actually get gameplay into what is primarily a yeah. storytelling um, ex uh, experience. Uh, I, I have a quote here from Andrew Goldtarb uh, from RGN Beyond. Uh, and that is, the dialogue here feels so completely natural. A flirty conversation between two friends that start that are starting to want more. It's something cute, it's familiar, and it's refreshingly realistic. And that's nice. If it's refreshingly real, re refreshingly re realistic, re refreshingly realistic. Yeah. Uh, that was it a should, funny insert. It should um, have like really awkward situations where you like. <laughs> when either of you know what to say next. Yes, yeah. just long, empty silence. <laughs> just so, how was your day? Endless winky face emojis. Mm. Um, yeah, it's 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 nice to see a game actually sort of... This is a weird way to describe it, but it's nice to see games not afraid to be human. Mm -hmm. Like, lots of things that games do are put you on alien worlds, deal with post-apocalyptic this, horror that, and that's cool because like it's fantasies and it's stuff that we want to experience. But like... It's also nice to see games using the medium to tell really human stories and deal with human problems and things that you do actually do in your day-to-day -day life and stuff that you might want to see from a different perspective and experience from a different perspective. And we joke about walking simulators and stuff, but like genuinely Gone Home is one of the one of my favorite games for doing that. And so I hope this is another one. Sound cool? I think that's that's, a, that's awesome. Cool. So that yeah. was, and we're really sorry if we pronounced it wrong, uh, that was C. Bailey or Key Bailey or C. Maybe you should try all the different ways to say it. Maybe. No. I feel like there aren't many ways you can get it wrong, though. C. Bailey. C. There Bailey, C. There, there are an awful lot of vowels in that. Yeah, that's true. Mm. So, my friend, mm. is there anything that you're looking forward to playing this week? Anything that I'm looking forward to playing? Yes. Well, I'm looking forward to playing uh, whatever it is on my new 64-bit computer. <laughs> <laughs> hashtag PC Master Race. Hashtag PC Master Race. Um, hashtag built the wrong PC. Um, <laughs> <laughs> should we call it a day? I think we ought to. Excellent. This one actually recorded all the way through. Huzzah! No uh, PC Master Race! <laughs> Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, if you did like this and you want to come in, um, join in the conversation, get prepared for EGX with us because, man, that's going to be fun this year. Uh, come and have a look on our Facebook page. We have a Facebook page and a Twitter 
Uh, you can join us on there. We even have a. Do we have a YouTube channel? This this is in fact a YouTube channel. No, but but I don't mean posting things on YouTube. I mean a YouTube channel. This is in fact a YouTube channel. God, you young people and your I technology <laughs> and your new. I um... remember when this was all fields and the internet was in black and white. <laughs> um... <laughs> <laughs> and a cheeseburger would only cost you forty p. Anyway, um, yeah, come and have a look on. Come and have a look on those pages. Come and like the pages if you would, because we love the support. Um, and thank you very much for joining us. Of course, it's a YouTube channel because of course you've got to like and subscribe. Oh, see, I wondered if that was what you were setting up to do. <laughs> <You> bastard. <laughs> <laughs> see, I'm not all stupid. Well, not not. How's that thirty-two bit PC of yours? Um... Shut your face. <laughs> Thank you very much for joining us, and we will see you next week. Uh, my name has been Lor- Cam- I, my name has been Lawrence. That's been Cameron. Yeah. Uh, and until next week, thank you very much. See you then, and the game's up.